We the Mellon Fellows, Anne and I, felt it was important to gather statements from the Weavers on their work. Despite the long hours that go into making something as intricate as a Navajo textile, not only are a majority of Dine Weavers underpaid for their time and talent, but also their work when exhibited is not regularly presented in combination with their voices and stories. We began the process of gathering Weavers' comments and stories last spring, around the time of the Heard Museum Guild Indian Fair and Market. We knew a number of the weavers would be present at the event to sell their textiles, so Director of Research Anne Marshall sought out as many as were in attendance and had a dialogue with them there, in person. For the rest of the curatorial team, we started the process of tracking down weavers' contact information using the museum's own resources. After this, the team branched out. We reached out to weavers or their family members and weaver colleagues on social media. We reached out to organizations that work to advance Navajo weaving, to galleries that we knew had relationships with certain weavers. We sent out packets to those weavers we had a mailing address for, requesting from them anything about themselves, their family and weaving, weaving legacy, and lastly, a statement specific to the textile. For some, we had an email or phone number, but no mailing address. If we just had a phone number, we called, had a quick chat, and asked for another method of contact so we could get them a packet via mail or email. From the beginning, it was the All at Once curation team's intent to frame the weavers' comments and statements at the center of the exhibition. In some instances, the response we got from the weaver was drafted in the form of an artist statement. Some comments were gathered through conversation and we did our best to convey the meat of the discussion while also providing more clarity or context. In those cases where we didn't receive either a statement or commentary from the artist, we divided those textiles up and the assigned team member wrote a small commentary. I think the main questions to ask a weaver are, tell us about yourself, your weaving beginnings, your weaving lineage and legacy. Also, how would you like your textile to be displayed? Which side is up, right, left, etc.? Lastly, what was your inspiration for this piece and what would you like to share about its story? This means different things to a weaver. It can mean the story behind its design or it can mean the story of its creation, including any of the memorable life happenings of the weaver at the time she or he was weaving the textile. The Diné Weaver community is very diverse. I learned this even more because of my experience gained through my three years as an Andrew W. Mellon Fellow, prior to my becoming an assistant curator. Weavers come to weaving through many different avenues, and weavers choose to be a participant in the weaving process at different levels. Weavers can be fourth, fifth, or X-generation weavers who have learned through a family member, but some newer weavers have learned in the classroom and might have been taught by a Diné Weaver who isn't a relative. I have a few examples of Weaver's responses that stood out. We found out that one textile woven by Elisa Ann Peacock was mistakenly attributed to her mother. We first reached out to Edda Mae Peacock, who responded that the textile was instead woven by her daughter and put us in touch with Elisa, who then provided us with some wonderful comments. Another Weaver, Selena Dale, an elder featured in the exhibition with a superbly woven and innovative reinterpretation of a Two Gray Hills textile, I initially contacted her daughter, Regina, who let us know that she couldn't talk directly with Selena because of concerns about COVID. This is the reality of the world right now. We're in the middle of a global pandemic. Even though what we got from Selena in the end was a very brief, she said, I made and wove so many rugs, I don't remember when I wove this rug and I lost count of many other rugs I have woven. What this interaction conveyed to me was the children's deep admiration for their mother as a weaver. Lastly, Alverna Van Winkle, who was in the military and then worked a nine to five job before she decided to jump into weaving fully, relayed to us, nothing beats being self-employed and weaving full time. She describes the freedom weaving full time has allowed her. She has time to be with family and can pick up and go anytime and take work with her. She spoke of her grandmother, whose words to her were, you should always have a rug set up and on the side to fall back on. These words weighed heavily with Alverna, and she really was grateful that her life enabled her to fulfill her grandmother's wish that weaving be kept alive within the family. 